Today we are going to do a live review of the Casio CA53W, or their calculator watch. This is an absolute classic. This thing has been around forever. We're gonna get into a little bit of the history here, but just look at this beautiful little watch here. It is quite a small watch, make no mistake about that, but not so small that it's unusable or anything like that. Now you can get this in a few different color options. I think I've seen this in a green, I've seen it in a red, I've seen it in a blue, but the only thing about that is all of those are the negative display option. So this is the only one I've seen with a positive display and I just find that negative display way too hard to read. So I went with this one here though I did want to go with the blue one. The blue one looks super super cool. Now Believe it or not, this watch actually came out in 1988. So, you know, you can't look at it through today's lens and we have smart watches and that kind of thing. When this thing came out in 1988 and it was on people's wrists, it was a big deal. But it's actually not Casio's first calculator watch. Their first calculator watch was called the CA50. And this is the successor, the replacement to that, just a better version of that CA50. But this is the one that got popular. This is the one that people actually know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this has been a cult classic for a while now. It was in Back to the Future 2 and 3, according to Wikipedia. The one in Back to the Future 1, that was actually the original calculator watch. So, uh, and then it was in Breaking Bad. Walter White wore that sort of throughout the show. And it was also in a number of other shows, including Honey, I Shrunk the Kids with Rick Moranis. Shout out to Rick Moranis, pretty cool. So the first one that I want to go about is obviously the calculator. Pretty, pretty easy to assume that the main feature on a calculator watch is the calculator. And this is a noteworthy feature, especially for a watch at this time, right? To have this little calculator on your wrist was incredibly handy and not something they really had up to that point. So it's an eight digit calculator, sort of basic functions only in terms of addition, subtraction, multiplic multiplication, division. Um, you're not doing fractions on this thing. You're not, you know, doing the square root of a number, but come on, it's a calculator on your wrist. It's not meant to be like that. Yeah, you're not going to be doing any, you know, your taxes on this thing here, but calculating a tip when you're out and about, that's definitely doable. Now, one thing I find weird, these are the kind of noteworthy features I'm going over here. Now it has a lack of beep when you go between the modes. Make no mistake, it does beep, right? But just not when you go between the modes, which I don't like. It says on the website that you can turn that off, but I even looked in the instruction manual, doesn't mention it ever. So I don't think you can, but I could be wrong. Now, one thing that's cool, the stopwatch beeps at every 10 minute interval. So if you have a stopwatch running, it's going to give you a little beep every time 10 minutes has passed, which I think is cool because it just kind of alerts you where you're at in a very subtle way. Now, another thing that's cool is you control all of the input with the numbers. So when you're putting in the time, you're not using the pushers on the side to do the time. You're going to use the actual numbers on the keypad itself. Same with AM and PM, turn the signal on and off. So it's much easier to use in that aspect. So I do, I do like that on it. Now this is water resistant. Um, it just says water resists. So it's not like 50 meters or anything like that. So that means like hand washing, maybe wear it in the shower or something like that. It should be okay for that, but it's not gonna be the kind of thing you're gonna wanna go scuba diving with, um, anything like that. So now in terms of the actual watch itself, this is a very small and wearable case. It's not only thin, but the dimensions are quite small as well, which makes it very, very easy to wear. Um, I find it similar to wearing something like an F91W. It just has that same feel on the wrist, but it definitely is a bit taller. It wraps around your wrist a little bit differently, whereas the F91 is quite a bit smaller. It's smaller in the other dimension too, but it just feels similar to when you're wearing it. It, it, it doesn't feel any bigger is what I'm saying. Now I've worn this um, in the sauna a number of times on some long runs because I wanted to put it through the paces and it handled that no problem whatsoever. And I didn't find this was ever like taking up room on my wrist or making it hard to bend my wrist or anything like that. So, you know, even with the water resist, it seems like it can handle some, you know, sweat and sauna type thing, but it's very, very wearable, no matter what you're doing, an all day watch kind of thing. In terms of the actual dimensions, the lug to lug is 43.2. It's 34.4 millimeters wide, and then only 8.2 millimeters thick. So it's gonna have no problem going under any shirt sleeve you got. If it's not going under that, your sleeve is too tight, my friend. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the watch face a little bit. And the watch face is pretty clearly dominated by that big keypad, right? 
So much so, this screen does suffer to some degree. Um, it's quite small, like the numbers are quite small on it, especially compared to some other ones that I have. Um, I wouldn't call it hard to see because my eyes are still good, thankfully, but um, if you kind of struggle with that sort of thing, you might find this one a little on the small side. Also, if you have big fingers, like I, I wouldn't say I have big fingers, and it's a little tough to use this thing. Like, you all, if you want to do some serious calculations, take it off your wrist and do it with two fingers because you're going to find it much easier. But if you have large fingers, you're going to have to make sure you very carefully get into those buttons. You don't have a ton of room on there. Now, as you'll notice, this is telling us the PM, the alarms on, the hourly signals on. It's telling us the time, of course. And then you see it says Saturday in the top right corner. So this doesn't tell you the um, the day of the or it tells you the day of the week, but it doesn't tell you the date. And it doesn't tell you the month. However, if you press the top right button, then you're going to see it tells you the year as well as the month and the day. So it's going to tell you just the day of the week here, but year, month, and day if you press this button in the top right corner. Now, as you see, the text is kind of written both that close there. The text is both written above and below the buttons. So it's gonna take you a little bit, like if you look in the top right, that arrow's pointing up. If you look in the bottom right, that arrow's pointing down. So a little bit hard to use off the cuff, but you're not going to have a difficult time once you get used to it. You're just gonna know where the buttons are and you're only gonna use a handful of them over and over rather than just use all the buttons all the time. Now when we're moving down to the strap here, this is a very comfortable strap. Similar to, you know, an F, I always go to the F91W because everyone knows that watch, but it's similar to that, though it feels a little bit beefed up. I like these air holes that it has here right by the watch, coming out of the watch. It's gonna give you some ventilation to keep your wrist nice and cool. It's got a plastic buckle, plastic strap, plastic strap holder, all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a cheap plastic kind of a strap, but it's very, very light, super comfortable. Um, it can go quite large, you know, if you have a super big wrist, I mean, that can accommodate quite a large wrist, but if you have a wrist of this size, I think the watch is going to look a little bit small on your wrist. So um, I think this is a kind of a normal size, average size, I should say, to a smaller wrist this is going to go on. If you have a large wrist, it's going to be a little tiny watch on there, a little tiny calculator on there. <clears throat> now, moving on to the backlight, there is no backlight. Um, this is a very straightforward category. Um, and it's, it, it, it does suffer because of it. It really makes it kind of a daytime watch. Um, once it's dark, you just can't see this screen. It's just that simple. If you can try to angle it to catch some light and you can see it and oftentimes you can, but not having a backlight really does hurt the kind of day-to-day -day wearability of the watch. Also, you know, I don't find it has the absolute sharpest display I've ever seen. I find it's like when it's on an angle kind of like this, it's at absolute sharpest. And if you kind of look at it the face on, it doesn't seem just as sharp. I don't think it's dull or anything, but it's just not the very sharpest one I've seen. So, you know, all those factors and then no backlight, it is a little bit hard to read at times. And then you could imagine if I chose a negative display, then it's going to be straight up difficult to read, I think. Um, so I would really like to see a backlight. It just doesn't have one though. What are you going to do? So let's go ahead and just take a look at the module. I want to show you kind of quickly what it does, the different functions that it has. This is our regular kind of a home watch face, our default time telling face. It's got two buttons on the side, a pusher that sticks out and then an indented button. You're going to need your fingernail on that um, to set that one. So you're going to go ahead, press that side button, brings you right to the calculator. So if we have eight, nine, five, one, or four. Okay, I meant to press one, but five, four, zero. And let's go times, see, it's, it is, it's a calculator, it totally works. 25, and that is equals. So there you go, so that's the answer for that. Pressing the side button is the C to like reset the screen kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's a little like, you know, it's a little tricky to use the buttons. You just have to be careful with it, right? They're small buttons. Um, I, I've never kind of not been able to use it after maybe two attempts on occasion. Um, but you know, it's a small button, it gives you decimals, all that kind of thing. It's, it's neat. I mean, having a calculator on your wrist, I remember having this watch when it came out. I'm not that old. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was super cool to be able to do calculations on your wrist. Now, after you do some calculations, it's gonna send you back to the home screen when you press that button. But if you don't do calculations, you press it again, goes to your alarm, 
Now your alarm, you're turning on and off with this button, right? So you can see that turning on or off with that button there. And then the signal, I believe, is this button. Yes. So turning this button here does that hourly signal on or off. Just a single alarm one time. Um, it's not a complex alarm or anything like that. Um, again, it's sending us back to the home screen because I did some stuff on that. But if you don't, it's going to send you to a dual time. So this is just a standard dual time mode. If you want to keep track of another time zone as well, this is how you're going to do that. Now, next, it gets us to our stopwatch. I'm not going to show you all the functions. I don't think everyone's using the lap in the first place, second place. I think people are using basic stopwatch watch functions. But just so you know what it can do, um, it can run up to 24 hours. So it can be up to a 24 hour stopwatch. It's one to a one hundredth of a second. That's the um, resolution it goes to. So you can do elapsed time, which is your normal sort of stopwatch function, split time, as well as first and second place finishers. So it's got all those functions um, to, to start it. It's this bottom right button here. And then if you want to do your lap or anything like that, this is the button here. So that's going to be a lap. If I stop it and then go back to here, right? So it's telling me my split time mode. That's going to be reset it. So it does beep like that. I wish it beeped when you go through the modes as well. So the stopwatch is your last mode. So regardless, you're going back to the time telling face here. And then if you do want to change the time when you're first setting it up or anything, you're going to hold this button on the side, hold it just with your finger like that. And then to move your sort of cursor around, you're going to press that side pusher. And then here, you're just going to put in whatever figure you want, right? So I just changed it to 44 after. And then if you put a figure in, it's going to um, move you automatically to the next character kind of thing. I'm just going to go ahead and fix that back. So it does make it a lot easier, I find, when you're inputting it with this system. Using the side pushers, especially sometimes you got to get your fingernails in there, it can be sort of tough. So having this numerical keypad honestly makes it so much easier. You're not going to be setting the watch that much, but when you are, it's going to be easier on this than it is going to be on many of their watches. Now, going to my favorite overall thing about the watch, the favorite thing is just the look and the style. Like this thing is a classic for a reason. Um, you know, it was such a lust worthy watch back in the day and now it's more of a retro kind of a purchase, right? But um, it is a functional watch. You know, not everyone likes smart watches or likes to wear them all the time. So I think this is a great alternative to something like that that does bring some function with that calculator. It just kind of depends on what you do, I think for a living and for fun, how much you're gonna use it. My least favorite thing about it, definitely the lack of the backlight. This is the first Casio I've owned without a backlight. And it's just, it's detrimental to the day-to-day -day usage. If you want this to be your daily driver, you're kind of stopping using your watch when it's dark, unless you have lights on. Um, if it had a backlight, it could be a completely viable daily driver. But as it is now, it's more of a daytime or an event kind of a wearing watch. But like wearing this one at night, isn't going to be that useful because there's no light, right? So um, having a backlight would really help. But overall, I think it's a fantastic little watch. Uh, I really enjoy wearing it. It's super light. It's super comfortable. Um, I use the stopwatch feature more than I use the calculator. But being able to have, you know, a quick little calculator on a watch like this, it's a novel kind of a fun feature. And it's a conversation piece. So if you're a Casio fan, if you like collecting vintage Casios especially, this is absolutely one that you should have in your arsenal. And it's definitely one I would recommend. So thanks a lot, guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. And we will see you soon with another video.